City cars. Small cars, they need to be easy to drive, cheap to run and small on the outside, yet spacious enough on the inside. But which did you choose between the Suzuki Celerio, the Hyundai i10 or the Volkswagen Up? Now they all sound kind of cheap, don't they? But then they are cheap cars. In fact, the combined cost of all of these is less than this thing. But that's enough banging on from me. To help you decide which of these three is best for you, I'm going to critique their designs. They do seem to be wearing dental braces. Inspect their cabins. You don't get what you don't pay for. See how practical they are. It's the little things that matter. And test what they like to drive. Come on, Hyundai, come on, you can do it. But let's start off with some numbers. This Hyundai 10 is actually the most expensive car here. That's because it's the range topper and it costs 13 and a half thousand pounds. So the range actually starts at just under 9,000 pounds. This Volkswagen Upbeats edition actually costs just over 13,000 pounds, the one we've got here. However, the range starts at just over 9,000 pounds, but by far and away the cheapest car is this one. It's a Suzuki Celerio. So this one is a mid-spec car and it costs £9,000. However, the range starts at £7,500. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwave.co.uk. You can build your ideal car online. You'll then get five great offers back from top dealers within 24 hours and you'll be able to compare prices without having to haggle or from the comfort of your own home. So the Celerio is easily the cheapest car here. But from the outside, you can definitely see where the pennies have been saved. Some small cars are designed to look cute, some are designed to look cool, but then there are those small cars that don't appear to have been designed at all, like the Celerio. It's sort of just there. There's just nothing to get excited about. It's as bland as a stick of celery. At least Hyundai has made an effort with the i10. Small cars can sometimes look like child's toys, but the i10 is actually a serious looking machine. The round spotlights at the front and frowning face makes the i10 look angry, but in a sort of cutish way. It certainly looks the part, but it's the VW Up which takes the most star points here. The Up is one of those cars that seems to have a very distinctive face and that helps give it character, though it does seem to be wearing dental braces. But maybe that's its target audience. Some small cars look a bit cheap inside and as sturdy as a wobbly milk tooth. So, can the VW buck the trend? The Up is clearly a car that's been built down to a price, but it's been done in a very tasteful way. For instance, this interior design is actually lovely. It's cool, it's quirky, it's interesting, and it's nice and light and airy in here as well. Though you might be wondering what the heck that's for. No, it's not a weird dinosaur claw. It's a smartphone cradle. VW Up drivers can download an app called Maps Plus More, which turns your device into the car's infotainment system. The phone's GPS works the sat-nav, while driving data and miles per gallon readings are displayed on screen through the Bluetooth connection. It also lets you control the radio and media functions through the touchscreen and stream your own music through the main speakers, which in this model is a banging 300-watt system produced by Beats. The i10 looks a little more sensible inside than the funky VW, but it still has its charm. To help you brighten up the interior of your i10, all but the entry-level car is available with different colours on the dash and the seat trim, so you can choose between red, blue and grey if you like. Also, you can get it with a touchscreen, though that is only available on the top spec car. It's a really good system though. The graphics are nice and clear, and thanks to both the touchscreen and physical shortcut buttons, it's really easy to use. The hi-fi sounds a bit tinny compared to the UPS Beat system, but other than that, there really isn't much to complain about. And compared to the Suzuki, it feels positively luxurious. The Suzuki Celerio proves that you don't get what you don't pay for. For instance, look at this. We've got manually operated door mirrors. And I'd like to introduce you to the infotainment system. And it's not really an infotainment system, it's more of just a radio. And that's as good as it gets. You can get Bluetooth, but it's a nightmare to program. So it's best to just blow the dust off your old CDs instead. The Celerio's dash is covered in hard and scratchy plastics, but that's to be expected for such a cheap car. But come on, Suzuki, why does it all have to look so dreary? Yet, while it all seems a bit miserable up front, at least passengers in the back get value for money. This Celerio may be cheap, but it's also very cheerful here in the back. For instance, the rear doors open nice and wide, so it's dead easy to get in. And you'll be amazed how much room there is back here. I mean, look at this. I've got acres of space. It's insane. This is supposed to be a small car. Doesn't feel it back here. 
Even with three in the back, the slim door panels mean that shoulder space isn't that much of a squeeze. Those wide doors mean that it's also the best car here for fitting a child seat, and the Isofix clips are easy to get to. On the other hand, both the Hyundai and the VW are so small that if you need to install a bulky chair, the front passenger seat will have to go so far forwards that it's barely usable. Still, while the up may not be quite as spacious in the back as the Suzuki, it's not all bad. There is enough room in the back of this up for someone of my size, though lanky people may struggle for knee room. Another thing to note is that it's a strict two-seater here in the back. You only have two seat belts. Also, while you can get in a three-door as well as this more practical five-door, even this one has silly pop-out rear windows rather than wind-down ones. I really hate these. At least the up has generous cubby spaces. The front door bins are deep and wide. There's a neat flip out cup holder in the center console. And of course, you get a special smartphone cradle. The Solero is the worst for in-car storage because the door bins are so slim that they're next to useless. But at least the glove box is a decent size. However, it's the i10 which has the best in-car storage though. The door bins are huge. There's a place to hold your smartphone at the bottom of the dash. And there are loads of cup holders dotted about the place. It's fairly good news if you sat in the back seats too. There's enough space here in the back of the i10 for most people to be able to get comfortable. The only issue I have is that it feels a bit dark and dingy back here. And part of the reason for that is that the rear windows aren't that big because of the way this trim line lifts up at the back. At least most models get electrically operated rear windows. So you can let some air in. Those windows aside, headroom is a slight letdown in the back of the i10. Both the Suzuki and the VW have more. And with three sat across the back, shoulder room is tighter than in the Solario. However, unlike with the UP, the i10 does come with three back seats, so it's better than the VW if you're popular. But what if your friends want to bring their stuff with them? Let's take a look at the Hyundai's cargo space. I don't really have that much to say about this car's boot, other than it's, it's actually all right for this size of car. Actually, there is something else. If you go for the SE Blue version, because it gets rid of the space over spare wheel and replaces it with some tyre sealant, you have 30 more litres in the boot, which is which is about 60 of these. So enough to keep you quenched for a long time. So 60 bottles of water sounds like a lot, but the human body is about 60% water. And just look at what the Solario can hold. It may be a small car, but you can actually fit a man in the boot of this Solario. Not that you'd probably want to. I've got to stop doing this joke. I've probably used it far too many times now. Sorry. It may have enough space for me, but I found it hard to hop in because the Solario's loading lip is high. But it's the same story for the other two cars, and all three of them have enough space for a large suitcase and a couple of soft bags. All three boots are short on clever features, but the UP does have one or two touches. Volkswagen has actually put a bit of thought into this car's boot, so you can get it with an adjustable false floor there if you want to raise the boot up. And when you do, I'm going to do it again, look at this. Oh, come on, balance, there we, there we are. When you fold the rear seats down, you then get a flat load floor, which makes it easier to slide items straight to the front. It's the little things that matter. It may be the smartest, but once the back seats are folded, the up is the smallest of the three. It'll hold two large boxes, two small boxes, one large suitcase, two small suitcases, and two soft bags. The i10's boot can swallow an extra large suitcase and a soft bag or two beyond what the up can hold. But the Suzuki beats both of them. It can handle everything the up can, plus a second large suitcase, two more small boxes, a few more soft bags, and a set of golf clubs. So, the Suzuki may have the most space, but how does it fare when it comes down to pace? If you don't expect much from the Suzuki Solario, then you won't be disappointed. Now, I'm being a little bit cheeky. Actually, it's all right to drive. The suspension is maybe a little bit on the firm side, so it bounces about over bumps in town. On the motorway, you get loads and loads of wind noise, but it's all right. You can turn the stereo to drown that out. And it handles all right. The only problem is, is that the steering is so blooming weird. It's like you try and turn the wheel and then the car eventually starts to turn. It's just unusual. The engine, it hasn't got much performance, so you really have to thrash it to overtake it on the motorway, but I can't fault the economy. So this one is doing 63 miles per gallon. I think the claim figure for this engine, this one liter engine, is 78. That steering does feel a little weird, but it's very light and the tiny 9.4 metre turning circle is the best of the three cars, which makes it dead easy to park and drive around town. The i10 is pretty easy too, only it's better in quite a few other ways as well. Considering what it's supposed to do, it's really, really hard to fault this i10. It goes around corners well enough, it deals with bumps okay. It's, it's an alright thing to drive, the steering as well, it's quite responsive. The only thing with it really is the engine choice, so 
The one litre is really puny. This is the 1.2. And even then, if you want to overtake someone on the motorway, you're ending up going like this. Come on, Hyundai, come on, you can do it. And the engine screams like that. <laughs> but it's all right, it's all right. I'm quite impressed, really. In terms of economy, I'm getting 48 miles per gallon out of this 1.2. The i10 has really impressed me. So the up will need to be pretty special to do better. It may be a small car, but this little Volkswagen up feels very grown up. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't funny, was it? Now, the point is that the suspension, it's nice and comfy over bumps, yet it doesn't roll too much in the corners. When you get up to speed, it's not overly noisy like some small cars can be. The controls have a good weighting to them. It is, it's quite an impressive thing. You get a great view out as well because there's big glass areas. Then there's the engine. You see, you can get this car with a one litre turbo engine and having a turbo just gives it more punch. That's what this car's got. And you can actually overtake things on the motorway. It does go at quite a decent rate. The only problem is that having a turbo charger fitted to the engine does affect the economy. So yeah, it's supposed to do 60 miles per gallon, but this one with me behind the wheel is doing just 42 miles per gallon, which isn't great. So where does all that leave us? Considering the cheap price, the Suzuki Celero is actually quite impressive. I was surprised how much I actually liked it. Thing is though, I would recommend you still spend the extra and upgrade to a Hyundai i10. It's just a more substantial thing. I really like it. It's very impressive. The only thing is, it's not quite as impressive as the Volkswagen Up. This just has a bit more style, a bit more character. And yeah, you can get it with a turbocharged engine, which is punchy enough to hold its own on the motorway. And that's why it wins this test. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And click on the video windows to watch in-depth reviews of the cars in this test.